Hi guys. Today I'm going to talk about Fruity Send, which is a plugin you might not even know that you've got. In this video, we're going to answer a few questions such as what is even Fruity Send? How do you set it up? Why might you want to use it? And what do you need to look out for when you are using it? So let's answer that first question. What is even Fruity Send? Well, it's a simple utility plugin that allows you to route audio from one mixer channel to another mixer channel. At which point you're probably thinking, I don't need a plugin to do that because I can do it in the mixer. And you're right. But let's go through setting up the routing in the mixer and setting up the routing with Fruity Send, and then we'll talk about the differences between them and why you might want to use one over the other. So in my project here, I've loaded up a simple drum loop. It sounds like this. And on this channel here, I've got a reverb loaded. And I'm going to very simply click down here to send the drums to the reverb channel. This here being the send amount. And it sounds something like this. Now, you can do much the same thing with Fruity Send. And I'll show you how to do that. Step one, go to the channel that you want to send to another channel. Load up Fruity Send. The important thing. Turn the send amount all the way down, or if you want, you can use the side chain to this track option when routing. And go into Fruity Send and choose your target channel from the list. And voila, we've put reverb on the drum kit. Now the volume knob here simply functions as a send amount. If this is all the way down, nothing will be sent to the reverb. If it's all the way up, you'll get the full signal sent to the reverb. Pretty simple. The dry knob determines how much signal that is going through your current mixer channel is let through after Fruity Send. Most of the time, you're going to want to lead this all the way up because you want the signal to continue going through on the drum channel. But let's see what happens if I turn it down. So basically, if I turn it all the way down, the only thing that we can hear is the reverb. The uh, selector we've already covered, that's how you choose which track you want to send it to. And the pan knob simply pans the signal that's being sent to, in this case, the reverb channel in the stereo field. So if I pan it all the way to the left, the drum channel is panned to the left, sent to the reverb. And that means we'll hear the reverb on the left channel. So now that we've covered setting up Fruity Send, let's talk about the differences between routing audio using Fruity Send or directly in the mixer. I've loaded up a project here, and on my snare channel, I've got an EQ that I just want to take out some very nasty resonance in the high frequencies up here. And I've got a little bit more EQ doing broad strokes and a tiny little bit of compression on the snare. These are changes that I want to make to the sound to sculpt the sound of the snare so it fits into my mix. Then I'm sending it off to the room send and I want the drum room to give the drums a bit more of a live feeling. After the send, I've put a saturation on the snare, which will only really kick in when the snare is quite loud and it's just there to give it a little bit more bam on the really hard notes on the snare. I've then routed the snare to the drum bus so that I can control the full mix of the drums as a unit. And I've sent the snare to another track here, which is a gated reverb. Now you can see that I've used the mixer to route the signal to the drum bus and to the gated snare. And I've used Fruity Send to send the signal to the drum room. What this means is that the signal that's going to the drum bus and the signal that's going to the gated snare channel has saturation on it. The one that's going to the drum room does not have any saturation on it. So in this case, I could not achieve the same result without using Fruity Send unless I had another mixer channel in the middle just to apply the saturation to the snare. You might want to apply different EQ to the signal on one channel than you do on your reverbs or your delays. 
Another important difference concerning the signal flow is the fact that if you route directly in the mixer, that routing takes place post fader and it takes the panning knob of the channel that's being sent into account. That means if I turn down or turn up the volume here on the snare, then that is going to change the signal that's sent to the gated snare and the drum bus channel. But it's not going to affect the signal that's sent to the drum room because that takes place before the signal hits the fader. And the same applies to the panning knob. If I turn the panning knob to the left here, then the signal that's being sent to the drum bus is going to be all the way to the left. But the signal that's being panned to the drum room depends on the panning knob here. So in this case, I've chosen to keep the snare panned dead center, but sent it slightly panned to the left to the reverb. Another thing we can use the panning knob in Fruity Send to do is to pan the dry signal to one side of the stereo field and the wet signal to another side of the stereo field. So if we look at my cowbell track here, we can see that the dry signal is panned to the right, but Fruity Send is panned to the left. Now, if I play the drum room, you can hopefully hear the cowbell out on the left. If you're having trouble hearing it, I'll bring the dry percussion in now, and then I'll take it out again. And I think you'll find it a lot easier to hear what the cowbell is doing. Using Fruity Send also allows you to listen to the signal on the send channel without listening to the dry signal. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to mute the drum bus. I'm going to solo the drum room. And if I press play, the only thing we're going to hear is the signal from the drum room channel. If I click on here, we get the full mix. So this can be very useful because you can listen to the signal on your reverb, say, and adjust the level of the various instruments that you're sending to the reverb. And it gives you a better opportunity to sort of mix it all together and get the sound that you want. So in this case, what I would do was I was muting the drum bus and I spent some time setting up the signals that I was sending to the drum room for all the individual drums. That's the snare, the hi-hats, and the cymbals are all going to the drum room and use that to balance them the way I wanted to. And I also use the panning knobs on the hi-hats to make them wider as well as the snare. If you have things rooted directly in the mixer, such as the snare to the gated snare, then you are only going to hear the gated snare if you have the snare playing. If I mute the snare, we're not going to hear the gated snare. I've done much the same thing with the instrument channel, which has a bunch of instruments, all the ones up here, that have rooted the instrument reverb. I've also got a side chain here, which is being triggered by the noodle channel over here, which is basically a noodly guitar part. And it brings me to an important point here, which is that if I have the noodle channel muted, it will still be sent to the instrument reverb, but it will no longer be ducking it. So while I use the instrument reverb solo to try and adjust the mix of instruments being sent to the reverb and get them all to sit right, I don't get to hear the actual sound of the reverb without the noodle channel being on. I'll play it back and you'll see what I mean. Now there's a couple of ways you can address this if you find this being an issue. The easiest way is to simply add a dummy channel in the middle, route the noodle to the dummy channel, mute the dummy channel, and then you will get the side chain as long as this channel is active. And the reason that that's happening is because the side chain is being routed directly through the mixer 
and not through Fruity Send. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of the potential downsides to using Fruity Send. If we remember that I've sent my instruments to the instrument verb channel, and I can simply right click on the instrument verb channel to solo it and listen to just the reverb itself, it also means that if I try and solo something that is sent to the instrument reverb, such as my chorus lead over here, I'm still going to hear the reverb of all the other instruments that are playing alongside the chorus lead. I'll show you what I mean. You can hear the guitar solo very loud on the reverb channel because I sent it to the reverb channel to be loud. I do want it to sound live, although I am using a side chain to turn down the reverb when the solo is playing. So if I bring in the rock solo and open this up, you'll see what I mean. Now, you can, of course, circumvent this. You can turn off the instrument channel and just listen to the dry signal if you want. You can turn off Fruity Send. But it's something to be aware of that if you do want to listen to something solo, you might get a whole drench of reverb on top of it. And if you are side chaining your reverb to duck it, then it will no longer be ducked and it will be a big wash like we heard with the guitar solo. Another thing to definitely pay attention to is keeping track of what your fruity sends are sending to. And I would strongly suggest that when you add fruity send, you open it up and you hit F2 and you give it a name that describes what it is being sent to. Because if you look at my project, you can see I've got a whole host of send channels. And if all I've got in the mixer is fruity send, then I don't know where that is actually sending. And if you have a channel that has multiple instances of fruity send, for example, you're sending it to a delay and you're sending it to a reverb, you really, really, really want to know what that send is sending the audio to. So name them. I'd also suggest that you give them a color so that they stand out in the mix. If you look at my mixer, you'll see that the sends are all blue, as are the send channels in the mixer. And I've also colored the sidechain compressors in red. That way I know that what these things are and I can immediately pick them out in the mixer. And another thing to look out for that can be a real pain and it's another very important reason to name your fruity sends is if you've got a channel that is routed to multiple channels, which you probably do if you're using a send, and you change the order of channels in the mixer, your routing can go haywire. I'm going to show you what I mean. If you take a look at the cowbell channel, you can see that it's rooted to the percussion bus, which is on channel seven, and it's rooted to the drum room that's on channel 11. Now, if I open the drop down to see what it's currently rooted to, it says drum room. But if I move the percussion bus far enough that it's got a higher number than the drum room channel, so now the drum room's on channel 10 and the percussion bus is on channel 12, if I open that drop down, you'll see that it's now suddenly routed to the percussion bus instead of to the drum room. If I move it back so that it's got a number that is lower than the drum room, it'll route it back to the correct one. So if you change the order of your mixer channels, you definitely need to check that your routing is still correct. And this also applies to sidechain for compressors as well, which is another reason that I've labeled them in the mixer to make sure that I know what is supposed to be triggering it. So if I open up Fruity Limiter that's used to sidechain the reverb here, and I know that the solo channel should be sidechaining it, and I open the list, I can check that I've got the right thing triggering the sidechain. This is something you should definitely bear in mind Another thing to bear in mind is if you do volume automation, make sure you do it at the right point in your chain. 
If you simply automate the volume fader and you have Fruity Send on the channel whose volume you are automating, you are only going to be changing the volume of the dry amount and the send amount will remain constant. So if you have something like a volume fade in and you start out with none of the dry signal and you ramp it up, you're not going to get the same effect on Fruity Send. If you want to do volume automation and you want the amount of the signal being sent to the reverb to move as well as the amount of volume coming out of the dry signal, you want to put something like Fruity Balance or Panomatic before you hit Fruity Send. You can simply automate the volume fader and do it that way. If you do that, then the volume change is going to affect both the amount that's coming through the entire signal chain and being routed to other channels in the mixer and the amount that's going through Fruity Send. All right, so that just about wraps it up. You should now understand the difference between routing directly in the mixer and routing using Fruity Send. It basically comes down to signal flow, being able to choose where in your chain you want to split a signal and send it to another channel. On top of that, you can also pan the signal differently in the mixer itself and using Fruity Send. There's a couple of things to look out for. Name your instances of Fruity Send. It's probably worth bearing in mind that there isn't really a right or a wrong way to do your routing. Whether you want to use Fruity Send or do it directly in the mixer very much depends on circumstances and context. For me personally, I'll generally start off using the mixer to route things, get them set up in a basic fashion so that I've got things going where I want them to. And if I find that using Fruity Send will make my life easier, for example, balancing the instruments being sent to a reverb channel, or if I'm sidechaining something and the timing of the sidechain is key and I want to listen to that separately, then I'll use Fruity Send. I'll also use Fruity Send if I want to split the signal at a particular point in the chain. So use your judgment, but be aware that this is a tool in your toolbox that you can use if the situation is right. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.